Secretary of Clark, it is my privilege and pleasure to welcome you to this afternoon's graduation ceremony in this most beautiful of English cathedrals. And we do thank the Dean and Chapter for allowing us to hold our graduation ceremonies in the cathedral. It is a particular privilege to have the Mayor of Peterborough, Councillor David Sanders, with us this afternoon. Sir, we are most grateful to you sparing the time in what I know is a very busy diary to be with us. Graduation ceremonies follow a tradition that began in the 15th century, and that tradition has developed since. Roughly translated, graduation means taking a step. And graduation symbolizes the move of the former student, now called a graduand, into a new role in wider society as a graduate, there to use the talents developed as a member of this academic society. Each graduand will cross the stage and shake hands with the vice chancellor to symbolize their transition to this new role, and we will applaud them for their success so far and in anticipation of their contribution to society in future. At the end of the ceremony, the Vice Chancellor will formally admit all those who have crossed the stage, symbolizing that each and every graduate is now incorporated into the community of scholars. As new members of this community, as the academic procession leaves the stage, the new graduates will join the procession, and that will conclude the proceedings. It is now time to begin our formal proceedings, and so I hereby declare the ceremony to be in session, and I call upon the Vice-Chancellor, Professor Ian Martin, to address you. Vice-Chancellor. Mr. Mayor, Canon, graduands, family and friends, and colleagues, as Vice-Chancellor of Anglia Ruskin University, it's my very great pleasure to be here today at this Your Graduation Ceremony. This is my first year at ARU, and this autumn's graduations are the first that I'm fortunate enough to be part of. Firstly, congratulations on reaching this milestone and graduating from your chosen course. Today is not only an opportunity to take stock and celebrate your achievements to date, but to look forward to the multitude of careers that stretch out in front of you. These careers will undoubtedly be wide and varied, but they will be joined by a common theme that will touch all of you. That theme is change, and unpredictable change at that. My academic background is medicine, but throughout my career, I've had a very active engagement with computer and digital technology. To put it bluntly, I'm a bit of a geek. But I'm gonna use both my professional career and my interests to put context to this address about change. It was the German philosopher Hegel who first commented that the only thing we learn from history is that we learn nothing from history. He was right in all but one context. The one thing we have learned from history is that we're terrible at predicting the future. A few examples, firstly historical. The telephone has too many shortcomings to be a serious means of communication. Western Union Internal Memo, 1876. It wasn't just the Americans. The Americans have need of the telephone, but we do not. We have plenty of messenger boys. So William Priest, chief engineer at the British Post Office. Charles Duell, the US Commissioner of Patents. In 1879, everything that can be invented has been invented. Turning to the 20th century. Who the hell wants to hear actors talk? H.M. Warner from Warner Brothers. Have we got better? No, we haven't. 1949. Thomas Watson, chairman of IBM. I think there is a world market for about five computers. Popular Mechanics, 1949. Computers in the future weigh, may weigh no more than 1.5 tons. We think we're getting better? Up to date, Bill Gates, founder of Microsoft. 640K of RAM should be enough for anyone. Point made, but what does that mean for you? I think it means three things. Firstly, that the environment you work in will be very, very different by the time you retire. Secondly, you will fail if you try too hard to predict how it will be different. And finally, and perhaps most importantly, as graduates, you have a duty individually and collectively to help shape that future. 
your career is going to cover the next 45 years or so. How much change might there be over that time? Well, let's look back 45 years. For most of you, history from the textbooks. 1970, the Cold War was at its peak, the Vietnam War was raging, and Richard Nixon was the US president. There were two Germanys, and nobody at that time could have foreseen that changing peaceably less than 20 years later. The Beatles, you might have heard of them, were just about to split up. Relevant to today, only about 10% of the population attended university, a figure now nearly 40%. Life expectancy was between 65 and 68 years. Now it's nearly a decade older. A gallon, and we use those then, of petrol cost around 20 pence and commercial jet travel was really not available for all but the very rich. The digital technologies that sit at the heart of modern society, and when we have the church talking about tweeting and Facebooks, we know just how close to the heart of modern society it is sitting, was really only just starting. The most advanced computer then ran at about one two hundred thousandths of the speed of the computer that most of you will have on your desk at home. And perhaps most staggering, the amount of memory that I have sitting in my iPhone in 1979, not 1970 dollars, I couldn't find the translation, would cost over 1.5 billion US dollars in 1970 dollars money. What one billion dollar technology now will be sitting in your pocket when you retire? It's not just computer technology, it's across society. As I said, my background is medicine, and over that time, Medicine and medical practice has changed just as much and in some cases beyond uh, absolute recognition. The common thread to that improvement is the scientific base of medical practice, the striving to achieve better outcomes based on education and research. Yes, we hear much of the failings of modern medical practice and the difficulties and shortcomings of the health system, and I don't, for one, doubt those challenges, but let us remember just how much better things are now. None of you will have attended a school where a sizable minority of the children were in calipers as a consequence of childhood polio, a fact conveniently forgotten by those who argue against immunization. The chance of surviving cancer as a child has increased year on year for the last four decades. We now have the most incredible technology to image and make diagnoses. In both of these fields, and in just about every other field, these advances are possible only because of the parallel strands of education and research, the two things that define any university and indeed this university. They are why having universities and a university education are so important and why you have worked so hard to be here today. At ARU, we're committed to delivering an outstanding educational experience for our students, carrying out research and innovation whose results transform lives and communities, and working to support the economic, social, and cultural well-being of the communities we serve. We strive to see each of these aspects improve year on year, and this year was no exception, as testified by external surveys and rankings. We had our best ever results in the National Student Survey. The Times and Sunday Times UK rankings placed our educational experience among the top 20 in the country, and for the first time in our 24 years as a university, we featured in the prestigious Times Higher Global University Rankings, placing us among the top 2 to 5% of universities in the world. You are all a key part of that success, and for that we thank you. Whatever career you enter, make sure you embrace changes and advances, challenging, provoking, and implementing new ideas. Do not be so proud as to not recognize the inevitability of change, and how it will challenge your own career and practice. To quote Albert Einstein, whoever undertakes to set himself up as a judge of the truth and knowledge is shipwrecked by the laughter of the gods. In closing, I'd like to make special mention of your family and friends who provided you with support, <coughs> social, moral, spiritual, and very often financial during your education. We thank you for the support that you've given our graduates. I'd also like to thank and acknowledge all of the staff across ARU who've contributed to so much and many aspects of your courses, together with our governing board, whose wisdom and guidance has helped shape this our university. 
I wish you well in wherever your ARU degree takes you. I hope that you have a continuing relationship with this, our university, in the coming years. Our success and your success are now absolutely and inextricably linked. Enjoy the day. Congratulations. Anglia Ruskin University would not be where it is today without you. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Chancellor. We now come to the presentation of those receiving awards today to the Vice Chancellor. And I should explain at this point that each year we have a competition for the loudest applause at one of these ceremonies. Now, last year, would you believe it was the lawyers who had the loudest applause at one of these ceremonies? So let's see if you can knock them off their perch. I now call upon Pro Vice Chancellor and Dean, Professor Gary Packham, to read the names of those who will be presented from the Lord Ashcroft International Business School Globe Education Services. Professor Pat. Vice Chancellor, it is my pleasure to present to you graduates from the Lord Ashcroft International Business School Globe Education Services. For the award of Bachelor of Arts with Honours Business Studies, Kuram Atta. Marie Claire B. Aeon. Congratulations, great achievement for the best. Edwin Ameka. Very well done indeed, all the best. Salome Ezi. Congratulations, all the best. Ming Gao. Very well done indeed, all the very best. Tosan Vanessa Gowash Tessa. Great achievement. Jalal Jalal. Congratulations, all the very best. Jefferson Kolopile. Congratulations, Jefferson, great achievement. Kevin Miggin. Very well done indeed, all the very best for the future. A Bongui Nanluvu. Congratulations, all the very best. Endobi Ursula Nguashi. Kasada Porn Posalat. Congratulations, all the best. Jiwanfa Janedra Wikarama Singh. Very well done indeed, all the very best. The award of Master of Business Administration, LSC Malta, Ivan Alessandro. Congratulations, sir, all the very best. Stefan Borg. Very well done, Stefan, all the very best. Raymond ba De Batisa. Yosef Laid. Congratulations for the very best. Edward Mizzi. Very well done indeed, all the very best. Ludmilla da Costa Yoshida. Congratulations for the very best. The award of Master of Business Administration, Chukawuma Aron. Congratulations, sir, all the very best. Olomuma Yua John Agadebiti. Very well done indeed, all the very best. Lukwan Adiwali Adileki. Congratulations and all the very best. Thank you. Rachel Alamidi Adiniyi. <laughs> Congratulations, Rachel. All the very best for the future. Kiwam Miwa Adipojo. It's not going to work. Which one? Which one? Which one? Blessing. Blessing. Blessing Abiola Adisanya. Congratulations. Very well done indeed. All the best for the future. Olo Watosin Abiodun Adisanya. Very well done indeed. And all the very best for the future. Andrews Abie Adiusai. Congratulations and all the very best for the future. All the best. Tanuj Araguel. Very well done indeed. All the best for the future. Analika Cha Charity Agomadu. Congratulations and all the very best for the future. Albert Donka Aye. Well 
great achievement. Very well done. And good luck. Martha Doki Age. Congratulations. Great achievement. And good luck for the future. Mohammed Ashfaq Ahmed. Congratulations. All the best for the future. <laughs> Mohammed Tanvir Ahmed. Congratulations. All the very best for the future. Well done. Riaz Ahmed. Well done, Riaz. All the very best for the future. Osiabugi Esther Agibutsua. Congratulations. Very well done. Imeleo Sarah Akinkuli. Congratulations, very well done indeed. Nasrin Akta. Great achievement, and all the very best for the future. Mohammed Farhad Alam. Well done, all the best for the future. Nargis Ali. Congratulations, Nargis, all the very best for the future. Samuel Ofori Ansong. Great achievement, and good luck wherever it takes you. Vivian Ginoso Anadiki. Very well done indeed. Good luck with everything it takes you. Trisha Marie Dumma Aralelum. Congratulations. Great achievement and good luck for the future. Parmeshwa Aryal. Congratulations and really good luck for the future where everything's taken. Rafa Francisca Adis Edo. Very well done. Meryl Eidos. Well done, Meryl. All the very best for the future. Eyong Eyok Dennis Onana. Congratulations, sir. All the very best for the future. Jovita Awuzuro Diki. Congratulations. Very well done indeed, and good luck for the future. Mirza Amir Baig. Well done, sir. All the very best. Nirajan Barrel. All the very best for the future and good luck wherever it takes you. Which one? Emanuela Etela Nushimula B. Congratulations, very well done and good luck. Ashes Biswa. Congratulations and good luck for the future. Charles Akiyakum Boateng. Isadine Kadir Shahabi. Congratulations and good luck for the future. Subrata Das. Congratulations for the very best for the future. Tita Iapan. Congratulations, very well done and good luck for the future. Akuli Tambi Enal Abel. Very well done indeed and good luck for the future. Ijiro Emo Agegi. Favour Udi Obidie Ebiwaram. Congratulations to both of you. All the very best for the future. <laughs> Sandra Ofari Fringpong. Well done, Sandra. Good luck for the future. Firewill Mawali Gebekla. Congratulations to all the very best for the future. Bunan Gurung. Asikego Esther Ibnemni. Congratulations, all the very best for the future. Echi Sonnachi Placid Igugi. Congratulations, very well done indeed, and good luck for everyone that's in here. Blessing Buki Ighagbodi. Well done, and all the very best for the future, wherever the degree takes you. Mohammed Nazmo Islam. Mohammed Sharifur Islam. Congratulations, all the very best. Marufa Jana Fafan. Congratulations, and all the very best for the future. Vice Chancellor, that partially completes the list of graduands for me to present to you today. Each year, Anglia Ruskin University makes a number of honorary awards to individuals outstanding in their field of endeavor, who we hope will serve as an inspiration to those of you crossing the platform today. 
Their stunning achievement should motivate us all by reminding us that we should see our own success to date, but as a starting point. They pose the question, shouldn't we too aspire to success like theirs? I now call upon Pro Vice-Chancellor and Dean Professor Ruth Taylor to read the citation for the award of Honorary Fellow, Honoris Causa, to Jonathan Martin. Vice-Chancellor, it is my pleasure to read the citation for Jonathan Martin for the award of Honorary Fellow. Jonathan Martin is CEO of YMCA Cambridgeshire and Peterborough, an esteemed Anglia Ruskin alumnus. Jonathan joined the YMCA in 1991, initially taking up a role in housing where he was responsible for sourcing and allocating accommodation for 16 to 25 year olds with medium to high term needs. He also sat on the YMCA's National Housing Committee helping to define the organization's housing strategy and in the process gaining valuable management experience that would serve him well in future roles. Jonathan progressed to diverse departments within the YMCA, driving change and delivering service enhancements in areas such as youth programs, health and fitness, operations and development. After gaining broad exposure in operations and management, Jonathan decided to supplement his practical experience with relevant formal qualifications. And in 2002, he graduated from our university with a diploma in management studies. In 2004, he led the merger of two regional YMCAs to form YMCA Cambridgeshire and Peterborough. And in 2005, he was appointed CEO of the new organization with overall responsibility for operations and with the help of the Board of Trustees for shaping the YMCA's future. In 2009, Jonathan led the YMCA's takeover of the Crescent Theatre in Peterborough, helping to safeguard a greatly valued community asset which includes a 680-seat theatre that hosts both major stars and local performing arts groups. Jonathan currently serves on Cambridge's Health and Wellbeing Board, the Safeguarding Board, and he is trustee with local community development charity, Gladstone Connect. He represented the voluntary sector on the Department for Education's task force on school exclu exclusions. He is currently chair of the YMCA's chief executives network, and he serves on the YMCA's World Urban Network Executive Council. Jonathan has made an enormous contribution to local communities across our region, supporting social enterprise and the arts, and helping vulnerable young people to find their way in the world. He has consistently demonstrated real passion, determination, and commitment to the people of our region. And as a frequent visitor to our university's campuses, he will be an outstanding role model for our students. We are delighted to welcome Jonathan Martin to our Anglia Ruskin community. Vice-Chancellor, it is my pleasure to present Jonathan Martin for the award of Fellow of the University, Honoris Causa. By the authority vested in me as Vice-Chancellor at Anglia Ruskin University, I confer on you, Jonathan Martin, the award of Honorary Fellow, Honoris Causa. Congratulations. Vice Chancellor, honoured guests and students. I must begin by thanking the university for conferring this great honour upon me. I am far from sure that I deserve it, in spite of Professor Taylor's generous remarks. I feel incredibly privileged to be here today. Not only do I get an award that shows appreciation for the work I'm involved in with the YMCA, but I get to share a really special day in your lives as well. Standing here, it's hard to ignore the sense of pride one can feel 
from you as graduating students and from your friends and family here to celebrate with you. You are amazing. You've committed to getting a high level of education. You've studied and worked to complete assignments, written essays, attended lectures, and done exams. For most of you, it's meant to move away from home and greater personal responsibility. You've chosen to do this, and you've succeeded. That is an incredible achievement. When I was asked if I'd be willing to deliver a few inspiring words at this graduation, I agreed, and then thought, my God, what am I going to say? I didn't feel either old enough, and certainly not wise enough, um, to contemplate giving anybody advice. However, I thought I've got six months in which to prepare this speech, so I did, as I did in my own student days, I procrastinated. I admit then that it was at 2.30 a.m. on the 28th of September, my father's 86th birthday, that I suddenly realized I had a speech with lots of beginning bits, pitiful content for the middle, and no conclusion whatsoever. And that's when it struck me. This graduation, your graduation, isn't the end of something. It's the start of everything. The book of your life is yours to write. Nothing is promised or guaranteed, but everything and anything is possible. I was hesitant about accepting this honor. After all, my fellowship has not been earned by academic study, and my contribution to the community is modest. Many others are much more deserving than me. However, I can share with you that I started out at the very bottom of the hierarchical pyramid as a part-time receptionist at the YMCA when I was a student. I moved into different roles. I soaked up skills and knowledge, made mistakes, put them right, applied academic and practical learning, and now stand proudly before you as the chief executive of an organization with over 200 members of staff, 150 volunteers, impacting the lives of over 30,000 people each year. You may also start out at the bottom of the pyramid. Take heart that it may look very tall, but have confidence in yourself, see everything as an opportunity, not a threat, and apply your knowledge, and you'll be surprised how quickly you can rise. It also helps to remember that people working hardest often have the best luck. I've worked for the YMCA for 25 years, but my work isn't complete. Young people's needs shift and change, but they still have needs. Communities form, grow, and mature, but they still need inspiration, motivation, and support. This award is wonderful, but it reminds me that I need to redouble my efforts to make a difference. I also feel that in accepting this fellowship, I'm accepting it on behalf of all of my staff and the army of volunteers in the YMCA, who work tirelessly to have a real impact in our community. I am here, but only because I stand on the shoulders of giants, and I thank them for it. You here today will go on to be leaders in your chosen field. If I can offer a crumb of advice, leaders lead people, but great leaders lead great people. Thank them, praise them, listen to them, develop them, and never take them for granted. It's a long time since I studied at Anglia Ruskin University, but you should be reassured that the knowledge they gave me still comes in useful. I still use the skills they shared with me, and I still apply learning they passed on to me. That said, never stop accumulating knowledge and learning. Use this degree as a platform to greater skills and wisdom. You'll find it in the people you work with, the books you read, and importantly, from the mistakes you'll make. Many of you will go on to have stellar careers, the next Alan Sugar or Elon Musk, maybe. But remember, with your skills, talents, and intelligence, you also have a responsibility to make a difference in your community. We have many volunteers that give us their time fitted in around successful and often demanding jobs to support disabled people in our gyms or help our residents with CVs and job applications or to mentor a young ex-offender or to be a trustee on our board. As one volunteer said to me once, being rich is having a nice bank balance. Being wealthy is helping a stroke survivor in the gym to walk again and get their independence back. 
In addition to thanking the university for this honour and my staff for allowing me the privilege of picking it up on, the, on their behalf, I have a few more thanks to give. Thank you to my parents for never losing faith in me and for giving me my moral compass. Thank you to my long-suffering wife, Julie, who accepts the long hours, evening meetings and nights away graciously. Without you, I am nothing. And thanks to my incredible daughters, Hayley and Terry, you're the greatest gift I ever received. George Bernard Shaw once asked a speaker to limit his remarks to 15 minutes. The speaker responded, how, how will I tell them everything I know in 15 minutes? Bernard Shaw replied, I advise you to speak really slowly. <laughs> so slowly but surely, I repeat my message of today. It's simple and straightforward. The book of your life is yours to write. Nothing is promised or guaranteed, but everything and anything is possible. This is your moment. Make it matter. Thank you very much. Jonathan Martin, Honorary Fellow, thank you. We now come to the final list of those receiving awards today, and I call again upon the Pro, Pro Vice Chancellor and Dean Professor Gary Packham to read the names of those who will be presented from the Lord Ashcroft International Business School Globe Education Services. Vice Chancellor, it is my pleasure to continue the presentation of graduands from the Lord Ashcroft International Business School Globe Education Services. The award of Master of Business Administration, Hiroshan Shashin Rajiv. Congratulations, very well done indeed. Good luck wherever it takes you. Dinesh Kaki. Congratulations, Dinesh. All the very best for the future. Haida Mumbi Karoki. Very well done indeed. Good luck for the future. Prakash Lama. Congratulations, Dinesh. All the very best for the future. Ranju Limbu. Selena Mahmoud Kulieva. Very well done, Good luck. Charity Mbewi. Congratulations and good luck for the future. Moshin Mahmoud. Very well done, Good luck for all the Nima Helen Mahaiki. Congratulations and all the very best for the future. Abdul Mukhadir. Abinet Legacy Muleta. <laughs> Noella Segwili Mutati. Congratulations. Very well done. Good luck to the future. Priska Sakili. Congratulations, Priska. Good luck to the future. Elvira Ejen Nidikum. Very well done. Very well good luck to the future. Trinonso Ninkem. Dear list, Atem Mekan Lafak. Well done. All the very best for the future. Congratulations. Smith Mekenzia Nupo. Congratulations. All the very best for the future. Obioma Lois Nowafo. Congratulations and good luck wherever it is. Valentine Amarachi Enwe Negwo. Congratulations sir, good luck wherever it is. Sargis Ibna Obia. Congratulations, very well done indeed. Oluwama Yowa Igbung Odipidan. Congratulations, good luck wherever it is. Christina. If he told me, Okunkili. Congratulations. Good luck for the future. Ikena Leo Ohaka. Congratulations, sir. Good luck for the future. Mandy Inugata Ohanhen. Very well done indeed, and all the very best. Shadrach Efisinachi Okafo. Congratulations. Very well done indeed. 
Amaka Francis Okichupu. Very well done indeed, Mary. Very well done. Winifred Akalaka Okundo. Congratulations and very well done indeed. Fred Ifiani Opala. Congratulations and all the very best. Deborah Olawasan Olawukun. Congratulations and good luck wherever it takes you. Veronique Vanessa Ondo Nagar. <laughs> Thank you, family. All the very best for the future. <laughs> Adjoa Apari Asiedu. Congratulations and good luck and all the best for the future. Collins Osa Owusu. Congratulations and all the very best for the future. Kawaku. Owusu Mensa. Congratulations, very well done indeed, and good luck there if you were taking it. Bankoli Alagoki Aliedi. Congratulations, and good luck there if you were taking it for the future. Jira Parveen. Very well done indeed, and good luck there if you were taking it. Deeply Subramanian Patan. Congratulations, and good luck and all the best for whoever it is. Amalia Petrosan. Praja Pitawala. Very well done indeed, and all the best for the future. Mohammed Khalid El Hassan Riyadh. Congratulations, sir. All the very best for the future. Jennifer Gasper Riwugugizi. Congratulations, and good luck wherever it takes you. Mohammed Nassim Sajad. Well done, sir. All the very best for the future. James Sabana. Vaginath. Congratulations. Good luck wherever it might take you. Primajanath Selvaraj. Oh, very well done, please. Let me look very well. Mikhail Sherpa. Well, congratulations. Good luck for the future. Ishan Shifra. Very well done, indeed. And good luck wherever it takes you. Akash Man Singh. Very well done indeed, and good luck for whatever it might take you. Irene Singh. Congratulations, and all the very best for the future. Just Karen Singh. Congratulations, sir, all the very best for the future. Lilith Sandy Subtamful Nanfak. <laughs> you got there. All the very best for the future. All right, we're going to do the same. <laughs> <laughs> Vishnu Prasad Subedi. All the very best for the future. Vasanta Bakuri. Congratulations and all the very best for the future. Vanessa B. Tijega. Well done, Vanessa. All the very best for the future. Andana Taria. Congratulations. All the very best for the future. Julie Vergesi. Well done, Julie. All the very best for the future. Mohammed Wasim. Well done, Mohammed. All the very best. I'll go on. Pray for the mercy. Jabson Watson. All the very best. Good luck. Nakemta Simo Zimo. Very well done, indeed. All the very best. Aqua Nyambi Zina. Very well done indeed, and good luck wherever it takes you. Joe Ikpongwasa. Congratulations, very well done indeed, all the best of the Bipa Mukherjee. Vice Chancellor, that completes the list of graduates for me to present to you today. We're now nearing the end of the ceremony, but first I would like to ask Fred Akpala, one of our wonderful new graduates, to come to the podium to propose a vote of thanks on behalf of those receiving awards today. Fred.
the Vice Chancellor, members of the Academia, distinguished guests, and my fellow awardees. I'm honored to, be, to have been asked to give this vote of thanks today on behalf of the graduating student from Lord Ashcroft Business School, Anglia Ruskin University. Hence, on behalf of the graduating student, I want to extend our, graduate, our gratitude to the members of the academia, starting from the lecturers, the admin staff, the members of the academic circle, the library staff. You provided us with incredible uh, support throughout the period of our studies and have impacted our lives through the provision of learning environment that equipped us with knowledge, skills, and experiences. You guided us through an inspiring teaching and learning environment that encouraged us to challenge every status quo in life and in the world of management to entice improvement, to assemble advancement, to dig deeper into development and to take on open mind, open heart, open will. And this, in combination with wonderful classroom experiences and the knowledge sharing and other extracurricular activities, have filled our minds not just with knowledge and skills, but igniting us to love, to the love of learning, passion for discipline, continuous improvement that we endure even after our graduation. Having sincerely invested in our successes, and as we represent this great institution via our identities and CVs, we promise that your expectation from us will not be let down. Rather, we will greatly represent you everywhere we go in the world. Shortly after now, although has already begun, we we'll begin to join the elite members of the society to effect positive changes in our societies by the virtue of the skills and knowledge you have equipped us with. To our families, friends, sponsors, and well-wishers, we must extend our deep sense of appreciation. You invested in us, supported us, encouraged us, and have made a lot of sacrifices in us to see to the success of our education. You tolerated our incessant complaint over assignments, exams, and effectively handled our frustrations and disappointment when we expected or demanded too much. As you are celebrating our successes today with us, we promise that your expectation for investing in us will not be let down. We are going to reap the fruit of your labor and enjoy the return of your investment in us. To my graduating students, to my fellow awardees, the graduating students, I say congratulations. Let us celebrate a merriment because we've achieved the success, attained the goal, and have now our minds prepared and skills tuned to confront challenges and embrace life transforming opportunities. However, as we, celeb as we are celebrating and merrymenting, let us remember the popular saying that says, to him who much is given, much is expected. Much has been invested in us. Therefore, let us not play with our education, nor take for granted our knowledge and skills. Also, I want to remind us that this achievement is just a milestone and not the destination. And now we can begin with the main journey of life. Meanwhile, whether today marks the end of your formal education or you are still embarking in further studies, let us be aware that we should seek not to learn until we cease to live. Life is a wonderful journey, a course that you set, set and determined by the choices you make each day and the future they said belong to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams and prepared for it. Those as we are ready to move out and meet the world with our mind prepared and scaled too, let us set our direction with positive attitude and strong spirit. We have now received our education 
are now equipped to take on the world. Our lives are now our destiny, on which there is no world count limit, nor deadline imposed by the academia. Therefore, let us take the advantage of the strong foundation built in us by this great institution to create the lives we dreamed for and the future we have designed, knowing fully, just as David Cameron said on his last day as British Prime Minister, that everything is possible if you put your mind in it. Thank you, everyone, for gracing this adorable occasion with your presence and thank you for listening. Thank you. Fred, thank you. I now call for, for one final time on the Vice Chancellor, Professor Ian Martin, to address you. And now, will all those who have been presented to me here on the stage please stand? By my authority as Vice-Chancellor of Anglia Ruskin University, I hereby admit you to the degrees, diplomas and awards for which you have been presented to me today. As a member now of the community of scholars, take all that you have learned into society and uphold the values of freedom, of thought and scholarship. Our warmest congratulations to you all. And before we conclude, if you who've received awards today could turn and face your friends and family and return the applause as a note of thanks for everything they've done for you, it would be much appreciated. Ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to the end of the ceremony and I declare the proceedings closed. Will you please now all stand for the academic procession.